M. David Killian, ambassadeur et délégué permanent des États-Unis, ici à l'UNESCO. M. Killian. Mr. President, fellow delegates, UNESCO has faced its share of both good times and challenging times. Today, we find ourselves in one of those challenging periods. I assure you, no one appreciates the seriousness of the challenges this organization is currently facing better than my government. However, it's important to remember that the United States has adhered to a principled position over the past two years, a, posi a position it articulated well in advance of the vote in October 2011 to grant full membership to the Palestinians. Despite that decision by the General Conference, President Obama, Secretary Clinton, Secretary Kerry, myself, and other officials at every level have been working tirelessly to seek a legislative remedy that would allow the United States to resume paying our contributions to UNESCO. Regrettably, that remedy has not yet been achieved. Nonetheless, the administration continues its effort to restore our funding for UNESCO. Fellow delegates, my main message for you is this. The United States remains at the table. Just as we were present for UNESCO's founding 68 years ago, the United States remains as committed to UNESCO's mandate and purpose today. The United States is proud to serve on UNESCO's executive board as a responsible, constructive, and transparent partner to discuss issues of reform and restructuring, to encourage the board to retain UNESCO's unique character of consensus and non-politicized agendas, and to support the ideals of UNESCO. In the education sector, the United States strongly supports UNESCO's leadership as Secretariat for the UN Secretary General's Global Education First Initiative. To that end, Secretary Kerry has officially notified the Secretary General that the United States would like to become a champion country. Our support for the Global Partnership for Girls and Women's Education, launched on this very stage by Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, continues to build momentum around this critical issue. A complementary initiative is our support for literacy in Africa, and we're pleased to announce that the United States is reallocating $1.2 million in legacy UNESCO funding from Paris to the Juba Field Office in order to expand its ongoing literacy and peace-building project. In the science sector, UNESCO, with support from Japan, the United States, and others, has worked to develop state-of-the-art techniques to lo locate aquifers in the Horn of Africa. In areas where coastal erosion is a threat, UNESCO is designing new models to study and better understand the problem. UNESCO is a leader within the UN system at forging effective partnerships with the private sector. Particularly in this challenging fiscal environment, it is critical that we identify and leverage innovative sources of funding through public-private partnerships. The United States will also continue to defend the ideals upon which this great organization was founded, which includes standing up against one-sided attacks on Israel. UNESCO should be above this kind of counterproductive politicization, which tarnishes the ideals of this organization and is harmful to the purpose, spirit, and integrity of UNESCO. Likewise, we will continue to stand up against intolerance from any group or government and press for the peaceful resolution of conflicts. UNESCO is still the house of consensus and peace building. We need to look for consensus on issues that have important consequences for all of us. Nowhere is this more true than with UNESCO's unique mandate regarding freedom of expression. 
our debate on internet-related issues must take place in a spirit of openness and transparency and with a commitment to supporting the leadership that UNESCO has already shown with its open, multi-stakeholder approach to the issue. We must ensure that the, this discussion develops in a manner that is within UNESCO's mandate and that we do not attempt to use this body as a surrogate for dialogue better suited to other fora. Mr. President and fellow delegates, UNESCO matters. It's at the forefront of facing global challenges and improving the lives of people around the world. It expands access to quality education for women and girls. It leverages innovation and new funding streams through public-private partnerships. It protects and preserves the world's cultural heritage. And it promotes freedom of expression and the protection of journalists. The United States recognizes that UNESCO is a critical partner in creating a better future. We intend to continue our engagement with UNESCO in every possible way. Although the Director General is not with us, I wish to offer her my sincere thanks for her friendship and her strong and inspired leadership. Fellow delegates, in my last national address, I wish you and the organization the very best. Monsieur l'ambassadeur Kilian des États-Unis.